You're at Lake Rant, where I rant about whatever my $15 a month plus patrons want me to rant about. You can get one of these by being one of those. This one's for Neon Mobile Suit Avan Gundam, who says, Rant about the final scene from End of Evangelion, the scene where Shinji chokes Asuka. What do you think it all means? How do you feel about that whole scene? I love when people ask me about Ava, because they always get the most views. Um, well, that scene, I think the main point of the, the end of Ava is about, of course, coming to the decision to deal with other people. To not sand away all the differences between us and become, you know, one hive mind, but to to decide that you you, in spite of the pain that will come from the fact that you don't perfectly understand each other, it is worth continuing to try to communicate so that you can preserve the things that are different about you, which is what makes you valuable as a person, at least in the opinion of Asuka, for sure. Asuka is a character who absolutely thinks of herself as the only person she wants to be. She would be completely disgusted to have to share an existence with Shinji. And if the two of them were to be combined into one, it would fundamentally be the death of her personhood as she sees it. And that's why she refuses to go into the, the hive mind, the LCL, where everybody else goes, you know. Everybody else is essentially making the decision to go there. Like, the Ray clones show up as the person who they want to share an existence with, many of whom are people who, you know, have already died. And so they want to be there with those people because they, they have no other recourse for, you know, for, for being able to be with them. So... People choose to go into this giant bubble and they choose to all be one, but ultimately what Shinji concludes is that like if we are all one person, then there that's still that's just one person. There's no other person to communicate with. We haven't achieved communication. We've just achieved um, you know, obliterating like uh, the, you know, the, the parts of ourselves that aren't already in other people, so to speak. So he makes the decision that he's going to continue trying to communicate. And so I think that, you know, him strangling her on the beach is representative of that tension of the the fact that he, you know, this is like the most primal form of like disagreement. It's like uh, when you really can't take someone anymore, you choke them, you want them, you're just trying to choke them to death so they'll shut the fuck up, you know? And, uh, He's choking Asuka because he's, the communication with her has reached a complete breaking point. But then he eases up because he decides, I'm going to continue attempting, even in spite of the fact that Asuka is completely disgusted with him. In spite of the fact that there is nobody who he could have a more damaged relationship with, a more difficult time communicating with. They already don't understand each other. They already have been at much as much at odds personality wise and communication style wise as they could possibly be and he has harmed her in many ways which will make it very difficult and she has no interest in communicating with him but he still concludes that it's worth continuing to try and uh you know that's why i view it as an optimistic ending it's like even at the very in the position where it is as difficult as it could imaginably be, still deciding, well, that's better than just being combined with everyone else and having, you know, no one to actually communicate with, no progress to be made, no understandings to be reached. And I think if you tie this into the themes of something like, uh, I don't think it's as explicit in Ava that the reason why it's good to have those multiple perspectives is evolution, the ability to create new ideas, the ability to create new people, you know, the uh, ability to progress. You can't really do that as one hive mind, you know. I think, like, Darling in the Franks kind of explores that idea that, like, when there's no new humans being made, the ones who are here just stagnate, and there's nowhere for them to go, you know. Um, and I think that's kind of like carrying on the themes of what's going on in a lot of Gainax and Trigger shows. I have to wonder if like, if back in the day they would just like sit around the office and have discussions about this kind of shit and that's why everybody is so informed by it who, uh, who works there in those places. Hard to say, but uh, yeah, that's what I think is going on there.